There is something called as love, there is something called as attachment. These two things are not at all connected, but always people will say love and attachment. Love and attachment are not connected. Love and hate are connected. See, if at all if you hate somebody in your life, who is that person that you hate? Somebody whom you loved in the past and somehow it fell on the reverse side now, now you hate, isn't it? Do you hate that man who is walking on the street right now? You got nothing to do with that guy, isn't it? Somebody for whom you had love feelings, something went wrong, hate it, it immediately turned negative. If love turns negative, it turns into hate. So love and hate are connected somehow. If you don't manage your love properly, it will become hatred, <laughs> isn't it? Attachment has nothing to do with love. Attachment means if you have to use an analogy, love is like a flower. If you hold a flower in your hand, you must be constantly aware how you move your hands. You can't speak like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> have you seen how Adolf Hitler speaks? If you speak like that, the flower will become bare. But if you have a flower in your hand, you must move gently, every move that you make. What you call as attachment is like a plastic flower. <laughs> a plastic is not really flower. Somebody has made it in the shape of flower, fragrance also they put, but it is not a flower because the necessary life and blossoming is not there in it. But plastic flowers are very convenient. If you keep flowers in your house, at least a few times a day you have to watch them, what's happening. Quite a lot of nuisance, but there's life around you. If you buy plastic flowers and keep it, I think most of them come from Singapore, <laughs> if you buy Singapore plastic flowers, they guaranteed for five years. They guaranteed for five years, you know? They're very convenient. Today your children are being very naughty, you can pull it out and whack them with it. <laughs> Guests are coming tomorrow, you can put it back in the vase. Very useful. Flowers are no use, they're a lot of nuisance but their life, that's a huge thing, isn't it? So, attachment is very useful, it serves you well, but there'll be no life in it. Love is not useful, love is a big nuisance in your life. It takes life, it demands life out of you, but it's life. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Once you step into attachment, once attachment ent enters your life, anxiety will come. Once anxiety comes, fear will come. Once fear comes, madness is just the next step. Your child went to school, he's supposed to come back at five o'clock. Six, he's not come back, anxiety. Seven, he's not come back. Fear. Eight, he has not come back. Madness has taken over, isn't it? You cannot suddenly become mad. You have already been. It is just because situations have been conducive, you have been hiding your madness. The moment situations threaten you, you get exposed of your madness. Once you step into the path of attachment, madness is just a few steps away. There is no way to avoid it. Does it mean to say I should not care for anybody? You become most uncaring only when you're attached. It's not because of your attachment that you have become caring. Attachment means you're desperately trying to identify yourself with somebody, a group of people, to make your life happen, isn't it? Isn't it so? Now I'm deeply attached to these five people, why? 
That is the only way I can exist. I am just trying to extract life out of them to keep myself going. That's not the nature of love. If you are complete within yourself, if you sit here, you can sit here and fall dead if you want to. If you are made like this, now you can dispense with love effortlessly because you are not a vested interest anymore, you don't need anything from anybody. You are so complete, your existence is not dependent upon anything or anybody. Our physical existence is always interdependent, you know. Physical existence is always interdependent, there's no other way to live. But your basic way of being need not be dependent on anything, isn't it? Only then you will be truly wonderful for anybody who comes near you. Otherwise, you are very nice to these people and you are absolutely nasty to those people. Have you seen this happening? Hmm? Somebody calls themselves mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters to somebody else. There, they are all overly loving. They are willing to rob the whole world and give it to those children. It happened some time ago. Now that person will just roll if I say this on the program. I happen to be traveling with, uh, you know, one of the ladies who is the daughter of a very prominent politician in India. That man has uh, four children, one son and three daughters, I know all of them. This one lady is traveling with me. Something came up and we were just talking about India, what's happening. Then I said, if the country is handed over to somebody like your father, he will cut the country into four pieces and give it to his four children. The lady very sincerely asking me, what is wrong with that? I thought, okay. <laughs> What's wrong with that? If he loves us, he will do it. See, this kind of love, too much of this kind of love is happening in the world, isn't it? Isn't it so? People love somebody or they believe they love somebody whom they are attached to, for their sake they are raping the whole world, isn't it? That's the whole problem in the world, isn't it? Because people are living with attachment, not with love. Once you are attached to something and identified to something, to protect that you are willing to kill the whole world. Right now everywhere I see they are promoting this everywhere in the United States. We have family values. I want you to understand, family is a desperate group of people <laughs> who have come together because they have such basic needs among themselves. I am not trying to belittle it. But let's see everything bare and still be okay with it, isn't it? Isn't it so? Life… why don't you see life bare as it is and still be all right with it? People did not come together because of some lofty things. Simply because their hormones are pushing this man and woman together all the time, that's the reason why they came together, isn't it? And they don't want to leave it so bare and ugly, so they're trying to make it little beautiful by sprinkling little masala on it. It's okay. That's how life is right now. Let's enjoy what is there, that's not the issue. But don't try to glorify it into something else. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous, you know. Many families around the world have done this. They just slowly spoke and about their own family from generation to generation. Slowly they started believing their family has come straight from heaven. You know, these are the royal families established themselves. People openly they spoke and they wrote in scriptures and everything that our king is a descendant of God. If you look at that guy's life, he's… even the animals will be ashamed of him <laughs> The way he is living his life, even the animals will be ashamed of him. But he is a descendant of God. So you can do this to yourself and make everybody around you believe this. And now huge heaps of wealth all in one place. You'll see this in India. It happened long ago, not anymore. 
Indian palaces are the best in the world, okay, in terms of wealth. Most of it has been looted by the Mughals and the British. Everything that could be taken away, they have taken away. Otherwise, these places were made all in gold, you know. Yes, aesthetically very fantastic work they did, but this is just for, you know, just a few gooses who are worth nothing to live. So obviously it cost enormously for all the other people, but all the other people were made to believe they, they are descendants of God himself, so it's okay, that's how they live. So here also it's beginning to happen, people are talking, you know, everywhere, in every movie, in every this thing, even the political leaders going about saying our family values. This is a desperate attempt to keep just this man and woman together where they're falling off every day. But that's not the way to keep them. With attachment if you keep, then you will only become small mafias of your own. You're trying to extract something for this little group all the time, isn't it? Nothing wrong in forming a group because you can't… the whole world can't live in one open area together. We have to form beautiful little groups, but we don't have to believe fancy things about it. We can't go and live with this million people. We just live with five, six people in one house, that's a practical thing. But we don't have to believe fancy things about it, isn't it?